I'm just watching them come up. That was what I was talking about, seeing them just come through. Now one thing that is very consistent in the spring is wind. It seems like it's always windy in the spring. And when you're cork fishing under these conditions too, I mean your cork is traveling really fast and when you're casting downwind with the jerk bait, you actually have a little more control on what the bait's doing than you would with the cork that's just basically boogieing along with the breeze. So that's another one of the advantages in the wind. You can cast this bait a long distance. I can still throw it into the wind. I can be accurate with it and also really control its movement a little more so than I can with the cork and the breeze. Spring is in the air and that means it's time for crappies. The pre-spawn bite for just about anything that swims, especially crappies, can be dynamite. And one thing we found over the years fishing for panfish is that hard baits have come into play a lot more than we ever used to use them. So, you know, back in the day crappie fishing was hard to think about not using minnows or wax worms and going to plastics. That seemed like a big leap. And now we've been stuck on jigs and plastics and Actually, hard baits can be one of the most effective and efficient tools there are for catching crappies, and today, we're gonna go catch some crappies on hard baits. What do we got there? That might be better. What do we got there? Just another one, just another one. It is every single cast the fish are biting. We gotta run into some big ones, but. Man, oh man, that's the thing with pre-spawn. So many people will come into, come into the spring and be like, oh, the crappies aren't biting yet, the fish aren't in yet. So most people think of spring crappie fishing as when they're up in the bull rushes or when they're spawning being the peak time to catch fish. Now, that's fun and you know, I tend to often just wanna let the fish do their thing. It is fun to take advantage of the, the spawning bite when you're dipping right into specific areas where there's fish, but the pre-spawn deal is where you've got big concentrations of fish that are aggressive and active. So most people when they're thinking of waiting for the crappies to come into the real shallow water, the hard stem bull rush type of deal, are really missing, in my opinion, what is the peak bite, and that's the pre-spawn bite. When there's big concentrations of fish, they're aggressive, they just tend to be out a little deeper. That, you know, say six to 10 foot range seems to be the real sweet spot where those fish will They'll be there from the day the ice goes out till basically when the water starts to get into the high 50s and the low 60s, they'll start to make their way into shallow water. And you'll even see fish move throughout the day. So if we get a nice warm day, these fish in the morning might be out in seven, eight feet of water. They might scoot into two or three feet of water later in the afternoon. They're not necessarily going there to spawn, they're just going there to get warmer. And also another movement you'll see with panfish and you know bluegills and crappies is they'll go from being in the cover when it's cold to when it gets really warm and calm. You'll see the fish end up coming right below the surface. Often you'll see schools of fish that are just directly under the surface. And this is another reason why that, this particular tool is so effective. With my rod tip high, I can keep the bait high in the water column. If the fish are down in the cover, I can pull it and work the bait deeper into the water column. So it's really versatile. And when the fish are high and it's, it's slick water, they can often be scared of a of a float or a casting bubble, where this, you can keep the bait high and you're not spooking the fish with that cork. It's just a really dynamite system. There's one, feels like maybe a little bit better one. Ah, just a regular, just a regular. I wanna show you how this guy ate it though. Look at that. Huh? You think he wanted it? Now that's not even a big fish, but you know, when you look at, you know, situations in fishing, efficiency is always the biggest part of the, the equation. So if you're around fish, how can you most efficiently catch fish? And fishing with jigs or live bait is often very slow. And this is a really great system. So I was actually out here last weekend. It's not real efficient getting this thing out when they choke it like that. But anyway, little fish, I'll get them back. So I was out here last weekend playing around and I was kind of nickel and diamond a fish here and there, fishing a jig and a plastic under a cork and I was swimming a jig a little bit. I'd get one here, get one there. And I was like, you know what? I've done enough stuff with crappies through the ice and open water that I want to play around a little bit more with a suspending jerk bait, a hard bait. 
and it was amazing. I was casting, seeing, you know, getting a fish here, there, and all of a sudden the fish, I, would, I didn't even realize that there were fish right next to the boat that were coming up out of the cover. So this is the X-Wrap, one of my all-time favorite baits. Catch everything with this, with this particular bait. This is a size four, and a size six would be another great size, but think about how perfect this is. It gets down about two feet, about the depth you want a jig to be if you're fishing it, and it darts and it sits. Just sitting there is exactly what the crappies want. You can move it around real quick, and they don't just come up and peck at it, they roll over it. It's really, really efficient. So I'm gonna see if I can get me another one. I cast it out, kind of wind it down, and then I'm just giving it, you know, it's pretty much like you would fish a jerk bait for, you know, smallmouth or walleye or whatever. It's just really light, oop, I oh, missed him really light ticks and then, then it's that pause. So I'm watching the line a lot of the time because the line will just, just straighten out when you get a bite. There he is, I got him that time. What do we got, crappie or bluegill? Another, ooh, oh, oh wow, their pike was chasing him in. Another crappie. Not a giant, but I got a feeling over the course of the day we'll sort through a lot of these catch more but if I'm getting multiple bites per cast I mean that's the thing if I miss one it's like I just let the bait hang there and boop another one comes up and grabs it it's really remarkable boom this guy back see crappie and I'm actually going to I've got the barbs on here and I end up doing this a lot of times with just different different baits I'm gonna go through a lot of fish and I'm not keeping anything today so rather than Deal with barbs, I'm actually gonna take the barbs off of this bait, it's pretty easy. I've just got a pliers here and you look for the flat spot, this is how you do it on, a, on any bait. Use the flat spot of the pliers to pinch the barbs, don't use the groove spot. And then just kinda of squeeze it, knock those barbs down and I'll just make my way around all six hook points and it'll be a lot more efficient for me taking fish off the hook and I find that you don't lose that many more fish when you're fishing barbless. It's a lot easier on the fish. And if you do happen to get hooked, you get little sunnies or whatever, it's a lot easier to get out of your hand. It's pretty remarkable. As you can see, there are a ton of fish on this spot. And you're seeing a few fish with the electronics, one here and one there with your eyes. But this is pretty interesting. We decided to shoot some underwater video of the habitat and you'd be blown away on how many fish are in the cover that don't necessarily show up really easy on your electronics. They're hard to see with your eyes, but if you see a couple fish in a spot, chances are there are a ton of fish there. And another interesting thing, this happens, I've seen it happen with smallmouth bass so many times that it's crazy. Mike Hainer, who's holding the camera right now, decided to take a few breaks and we stopped for a sandwich. He threw jigs, he threw a couple different types of crankbaits, he went through five different lures Guess how many crappies he caught here? Zero. Put this thing on, get bit almost every single cast. It's one of those things, a suspending jerk bait, like the X-Wrap, which happens to be my favorite multi-species lure, can be one of those deals where it's absolutely the deal. I've seen it with smallmouth way too many times where you have this suspending bait on, it's lights out. So definitely want to have these in your crappie arsenal. It can be magical. Mm -hmm.